We're looking for the last time at breakthrough principles, how to break through, and I really believe that's what God has for us as a church, but even in the nations that the church will break through, that the church will not react to what's happening in the world, but the world will react because the church is under the guidance of the Spirit and taking initiative as God is leading. May that be true for you and me, not to be spectators of what God's going to do, but to be part of it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today we're looking at the meaning of the miracle. Everybody say the meaning of the miracle. My brother and my sister, many times we trust God for a miracle, we trust God for a healing, we trust God for a breakthrough, we trust God for finances, we trust God for supernatural intervention in many ways. But at the end of the day, for what purpose? You are healed, but for what purpose? You receive supernatural provision, but for what purpose? May God give us grace. In Jesus' name. Somebody help there, please. Hallelujah. But what are we saying? There's a reason for the miracle. Hello? And you need to find out why. Why? First of all, we just quickly look at keys for victory before we, as a foundation, before we're talking about the meaning of your miracle. Keys for victory. First point, see what he is saying. For that will blind you, for what will blind you to see is your flesh and the temptation. If I cannot see what he is saying, what am I talking about? You can read the Bible, you can pray, but you can, if you only hear what he is saying, you will still just see the temptation, you will see your reasoning, you will see your way of doing. Hello? But you will not understand what he has for you. But if I can see what he is saying, that light can blind me so much that I cannot see the temptation, not see the flesh, not see what the enemy has for me, not see what the fear and the justification or the, all those other stuff. Are you with me? So may God... Open your eyes in such a way that you will be able in the season and in next year especially, more and more, be able to see what he is saying. Because what will happen around us more and more will, will be ridiculous, will be less understandable. A lot of rubbish will happen. But as long as you can see what he is saying, you understand how to possess the land, understand how to reach your destiny, understand how to walk with him into that what he has for your life, if you can see what he's saying. Are you with me? Hello, anybody here? Okay, we're going to go. If I say we must see what he's saying, is that not that I need to hear the word, but faith that gives me breakthrough. Faith that gives me breakthrough can only come if I see. You can hear the word, and there's many people that heard what Jesus was saying, but nothing happened to them. And some of them who heard what Jesus was saying still went to hell. Sitting in the church building, and I can hear a lot of stuff, and I can hear a lot of things that are, wow, yes, great. But if I cannot see, there's no faith. But your faith will overcome the world, not true? Your faith will overcome the world. By faith you are saved. Through faith you will please him. Amen. Your victory is by faith. Faith, Hebrews 11 was 1. A substance of things hoped for. Things that I cannot see. A device for the that I cannot see. I have this assurance of things that I don't see in a natural way, I can see by faith. Amen. But if you cannot see by faith, you cannot overcome the world. What will come to you, hello, will not be not from Him. God will help us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody agree? We need to do what God has given us. We need to stand with that what God has given us. Amen. Let it be so. 
Hallelujah. I want to go on. When you look at Joshua, Joshua, let's go with 7 verse 20 and 21. 2021, there's this man who sinned. It is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw, when I saw, when I saw this beautiful rope and 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold, I coveted them and I took them. When I saw, once again I say, my brother, my sister, when you can see in the spirit, when you can see what God is saying, when you can see by faith, you will not see, first of all, the temptation. You will not first see all the things that you can covet. But I will fight the whole time against all the temptations that the world can give me. Why? Because I'm not blinded with the light of God. But if the light is so shining in me, you don't have this fight with darkness. The light will deal with the darkness. The light will deal with the darkness. But you need to deal with darkness the whole time if the light is not shining bright in you. Because the darkness can come close. But if the light is shining bright, darkness cannot come close to you. And darkness not just of sin, but the light shining in and through you is because you see what he is saying. You have the insight. Amen. May God help you. May God help me in Jesus' name. Is it not Eve? When the woman saw, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good, she ate. Where did it start? It started with all this reasoning with the enemy. And we, she had this reasoning. She couldn't see what God was saying. And so let's reason about a lot of stuff. Guys, when we can get in a lot of reasoning with one another, a lot of reasoning and, and, and but this twist, uh, arguing with ourselves, where there's a lot of things happening in us and around us, and opinions about people and stuff, even opinion about yourself. Then at the end of the day, I can just only start to see what the devil is doing. Start to see what the circumstances are telling me. When she could see that the fruit was good. I mustn't come into that place. Before that time, I must decide, no. I will see what God is saying. And that see is not, I understand everything. That see has to do with a lot of faith. But many times our see is because I understand how he is reasoning. I understand exactly what he is doing. No. 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 That seeing is by faith when even so much in such a way you don't even understand at all. Habakkuk couldn't understand, but he saw. He saw by faith. Even though this, the, these stuff don't change, even there is no cattle, even though there's no crops, Still, still, I will rejoice in the Lord. He started, he chose to see beyond. And in that there were victory for that man. And hell could not tempt him. Hell had nothing on him. Hell has nothing on you when you're walking in the light and the light is shining forth. Darkness cannot touch you. That's God's destiny for you. That's part of what he has for your life. And for me, may God help us in Jesus' name. When the woman saw, she fell into the temptation and fell into sin. Right, next one. Do not be afraid. Joshua 8, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you. Go up and attack. For I have delivered into your hands. I have delivered into your hands. Oh, now here we go to the next one. Okay. And the next one. Number four. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. What are we talking about? Do not be afraid. Fear. Opposite of fear. Love. Perfect love will drive out all fear. Do not be discouraged. Hope. You can take hope. You can have hope. Go up, attack, for I have given you the city. 
You need faith to believe God for that. Now three remains. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Hey, faith and hope and love. Because he loves me, I have an eternal hope. And based on that hope, I can step out in faith. And sometimes my faith can work, sometimes not. Sometimes I'm going to try this. But you fall back on hope. You can never lose hope because hope is in a person. And my eternal hope, Jesus Christ. You cannot lose his love because he's in you. He is called love. Unless God just turns his back on you, then there's no love. Emotionally, sometimes I cannot experience hope. Sometimes emotionally I could maybe not experience his love. But for sure, he's dwelling in you. His love is dwelling in you. His hope is dwelling in you. Hope is dwelling in you. But faith, sometimes eh, I step out in faith, eh, but I fall back on hope. I never, never come into the place of hopelessness. Because I fall back into who he is. He is hope. He is love. Amen. So in that sense, in from that place, you can have a command just to, not to be afraid, not to be discouraged, and go out and attack. And attack when you need to reach your destiny, when you need to take the land. It's not you waiting for an attack from hell. You're waiting for the temptation. You're waiting for the discouragement. You're waiting for the enemy to attack you and then you defend yourself. No. To inherit the promises, you take the initiative. You take the initiative. In a time when there's no intimidation, in a time where there's no temptation, in a time when nothing is threatening you, in that time, you must declare war then you'll take the land. Not opposite. Not when the enemy in hell is declaring war against you. Yes, by God's grace, praise the Lord, you can stand through the blood of Christ, you're protected with the armor of God, yes. But to take the land, you need to go and take. Let's say, go and take. Because these enemies, what? They heard the testimonies. You know, and they believe the testimonies of God. Many times the people of God forget the testimonies, but hell remembers the testimonies. That's why they were afraid. They were afraid. You need to catch the enemy when they are afraid. You're with me. God's going to help us. We trust for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen carefully. Everybody say, listen carefully. Joshua 8 verse 4. Do what the Lord has commanded. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it that it happens. Joshua 8 verse 8. I'm running through. Listen carefully. And in that carefully. And many times the word will talk about. See I've given you the city. See I've given you this. See and understand this. What are you seeing? That is God wants you to see what he is seeing. He wants you to see. Your father wants you to see what he is seeing. And in that place of seeing what he is seeing, have the conversation. But confusion can stay. If I don't get into the word, if I don't get into time with God, if I don't get into prayer, you will be confused and hell will see exactly. They will have, hell will have clarity of what to do in your life when you are confused. But when you can have clarity by faith, through his word, through prayer, through standing with him, through in his presence. If you can get clarity, they will have confusion. Is that one or the other? You're confused, hell will have clarity. You have clarity, hell will be confused about what's happening. May God help us in Jesus' name. Joshua 8 verse 18. Then the Lord said to Joshua, hold out towards I, the javelin that is in your hand. For into your hand I will deliver the city. You need to go by faith with that. Hold out that what is in your hand. What do you have in your hand, my brother, my sister? You have the sword of the Spirit. You have the word of God in your hand. Hold out into your destiny the word of God. 
Because through the word of God, you will inherit Canaan. Through the word of God, you will run into what God has for you. Like we said, they had, the rev had to have the revelation in the desert before they crossed the Jordan into Canaan. They didn't receive the revelation in Canaan. They received the revelation in the desert. And those who took the revelation, those who honored the revelation, those who honored the integrity of God in his word, they, went, they crossed the Jordan and they inherited the promises of God. What do you have in your hand? Hold it out. And do what the enemy thought of keeping away from you. He must go. You declare the war. You declare the war. You declare the war when there is peace. You declare the war when there is peace. Can I say that another hundred times? If you want to inherit your promises, it's not about defending. It's about attacking. Amen. Number seven. Stay dependent. This man, oh man. They didn't ask of the Lord. The Israelites sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. The problem is, when you had success yesterday, it worked yesterday, so if you have any brain, it will work today. <laughs> it's not about if you have a brain. It's about, is it God's will today? Because he wants you to do it with him. Therefore, he will change the strategy many times, many times, many times. Because he's jealous for your heart to be close to him, to be close to him. He wants you in his presence. He wants you to love him and you to love and him to love you. He wants that. He desires that. And he calls that eternal life. The essence of life. You knowing him, him knowing you. Hello? Are you with me? So, can God trust you with success? Can God trust you with success? Many people with success out there, but they went astray. But when they had success, the voice of success spoke. The strategy of yesterday, the success of yesterday become the strategy. Not necessarily. If God says yesterday's strategy is applicable for today, great. But let success not become your strategy. God must always be your strategy. They had such a lot of testimonies of what God has done at that stage. Such a lot of testimonies. But they forgot the key to hear from him. To stay dependent. To stay dependent. To stay dependent on him. Then you will take the land. Me and you, we can sit with a lot of testimonies. But still, be in a place where we didn't take the land. Where we didn't take possession of what God has for us. Some of us experience sometimes this frustration, hey? And then Holy Spirit give us that frustration to tell you inside here, you are not yet into that what God has for you. And then just don't become frustrated and give up. Remember, you cannot be discouraged. You're not allowed to be discouraged. Why? Because you must turn your back on the revelation of hope. You must decide, Jesus is not my hope. Therefore, I have the right to be discouraged. Don't take condemnation when you are discouraged, but turn back and look at your eternal hope, Jesus Christ. Amen? Deal aggressively with the discouragement and with the fear. Unless God isn't love anymore, then you have the right to fear. But if you, have a if you have a relationship with love and a revelation with hope, and he will never leave you, love will never leave you, hope will never leave you, he will never forsake you, then you can step out in faith. You can step out in faith. Amen. Aha, please, man. Amen. Okay, the meaning of your miracle. What's the meaning of your miracle? You will see in Joshua 10 verse 1. Joshua 10 verse 10. Totally, they totally destroyed. Everybody say totally destroyed. When Joshua went in to destroy, they totally destroyed. They didn't have some victory. They went in with aggression. They went in with faith. They went 
in with, with what is inside of them, and they totally destroy it. Because if you don't totally destroy it, that thing will attack you, and then you must defend, 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 defend. I'm on defense the whole time. I must be on defense. Why? Because I didn't totally destroy the rubbish in my life. God must help me. God must help you. But when the church get into that place of aggressively taking what God has for them in the nations, ish, it will not be the whole time the attack on the church. But it doesn't matter the attack. God will turn it for our good. God will turn it for our good. God will turn it for our good. If I follow the strategy, if I stay dependent, if I inquire of the Lord, then I will see whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for my good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Defeated them completely. Everybody say completely. Totally destroyed. Defeated them completely. We see miracles, miracles, wall of, walls of Jericho. Why? Why must the walls fall in? Why a miracle? The walls fell in. Let's run back and say, yay, the walls fell in. It was for a purpose. So that you can destroy the enemy within. The enemy must be exposed. The enemy that can have control in your life. That thing, Holy Spirit must expose that thing. Must expose you know, at the root of the situation is because there's a fear in your life. It must be exposed. The walls must fall so that the enemy is exposed so that you can deal with the enemy. The walls of fear in your life, fear to be rejected. I tried and it didn't work when I gave my everything in the gospel. When I tried to share the gospel, but I was rejected. I tried this, I tried that, and I put myself in Jericho walls. Oh, the walls need to fall. The miracle will happen, but for a purpose. To expose that thing in your life so that that thing can just run haywire, just can do whatever he wants. No, so that you can destroy that thing. So allow God, yes, for the miracles. But the miracle is not just sitting back. God will give you strategy. God will give you ridiculous strategies, you know? But then it won't happen. I don't believe in the prosperity manipulating teachings. And I don't judge them. But I'm just saying, yeah. Even in the time, I think I testified about that. I trusted God for the car, for the vehicle. Because we must get all the guys in Andres Pretoria Street, all that. Stuff. We must get them to Agape Church. They will not walk. I walked there for the cell groups. Good time with the Lord. Excellent times with God. And so I got the bicycle, and God said, so. And I got another bicycle, and God said, so. And I got another bicycle, and God said, so. And some guys, my, especially my dad, very angry. And because I trust God for a certain vehicle. But it's not a trick. You don't go and do that. That was the strategy God gave me. You follow God's strategy for what he has for you. And just as I saw it, we came back into the Bible school, and the master, one guy, God said to me, I must sell my car for someone here praying for a car. No, in absolute holiness, I kept quiet. <laughs> no. My friend, luckily I had a friend. He said, no, he's praying for a car. Boom. Next day, next week, car. For my parents, Dad, you remember I prayed for a car? Stop with that nonsense. Da -da 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 -da. Dad, I have a car. Dad? Hello? <laughs> yeah, what am I saying? You follow God's strategy, God will provide, but you need to follow the strategy. The strategy was so every bicycle that you get and walk through the city and wherever you need to be. Hallelujah. You follow your own strategy. Are you with me? Are you with me? Then what happened? Next one. Joshua 10.10. 10, hey. The Lord threw the enemy in confusion. The Lord threw the enemy in confusion. But after they followed the strategy. After an all night march. Oh, 
We create our release. My time is finished. You know? I have worked my eight hours. Now I don't ask you to work more. I wonder if this army said, sorry Joshua, my eight hours, I think you only paid me for half night walking. I'm not doing night shift. Hallelujah. Not for applicable to anybody here, but I mean, other guys, remember to tell them. After an all night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. After an you know, all night march, then only they got to the battle. Hmm. But we are tired now. Yeah, we must find our strength in the Lord and we must have time to rest in Jesus' name. Amen. But the Lord threw them. When they went there, the Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. They didn't have to really fight. They were in confusion. Israel has defeated them completely. Everybody say completely. Completely. My brother, like we said, my sister, enemy will be in confusion when you are in clarity. Let's say clarity or confusion. If you don't have clear mandate, if you don't clearly understand what God has told you to do, not understand his reasoning, but understand what he asked you to do. If you don't have that clarity, hell will have clarity about what to do with you. But if you have the clarity, God will bring hell in confusion. The enemy will be confused of how to deal with you, what to do, how to get to you. May God help us. And then after that, large hailstones. Amazing, it only fell on the enemy. <laughs> but in any case, more people died from the hailstones than from the Israelites slaying the enemy. The word says. God will surprise you, surprise you, surprise you in how he will give you breakthroughs if you must do the all night walking that was their strategy don't go and walk all night now through blue fontaine i'm just saying all night around the ferrari you know tomorrow it will be yours not gonna work tight then okay let's not say a name good the hailstones and then with all these miracles for what my brother we get into the sun stand still miracle. <laughs> the sun stand. Everybody say the sun stand still miracle. Time. One of the biggest, I want to say rubbish, is where we use time as an excuse instead of time as an opportunity. There's no time really for this developing in this. There's no time. To really take this extra time with God. There's no time to go and testify. There's no time to phone and give this encouragement to that guy. But may God help you. Because my brother, my sister, what happened? They had all these miracles. Come on. These miracles. The enemy was in confusion. They destroyed them. Hailstones. Wow. Let's go home. We have such an amazing testimony. No, 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 no. You don't stop. You don't stop. You don't stop with the attack. You destroy them completely. Everything that wants to stand against you for the destiny that God has for you. But if you don't have time with God, you don't even know what destiny you have with him. Then what? Let's just sit around and wait for an attack from hell and the enemy so that we can try to stand against and defend our lives. When you are defending your, yourself in your head, in your heart, with people and with things, Somewhere you have a life of defending instead of reaching out to inherit your land. But the attacking, that's not attack people in the flesh. <clears throat> that's not what we're talking about. I believe you understand. Is it a mate, mate? Okay. Sounds like a miracle. The meaning, the purpose for your miracle. Time set aside to do his will. Time is set aside to do his will. The sun is stopping. No movement with the sun. Because you need to do his will. Because you need to fulfill his calling. Time is on your side. They always say. Hey? 
address your time as opportunity. Address your time as opportunity. Sure. Address your time as opportunity. The guy was a little bit opportunistic in what he wrote there. Okay. Interpret purpose of miracle correct. Interpret purpose of miracle correct. You need to find out, God, this miracle is for what purpose? This provision is for what purpose? This healing is for what purpose? Are you with me? Are you with me? It's like somebody that nearly died and people would tell them, you know, God is giving you the second chance. For some reason, we understand that miracle. But first of all, the biggest miracle in your life is Jesus died on the cross for you and he rose from the dead. That's the biggest, biggest, biggest miracle. What was the purpose for you to be saved? Yes, but tomorrow also for you to be saved against your flesh. Saved from what the enemy wants to throw at you. Saved so that what? So that you can inherit. So that the world can be jealous of what you have, what the church has. Jealous for those children of God. You know, how do they get that right? Even, how do they get that right to have that peace, that contentment, that love for one another, that, that home that they've created, that family dynamic? How do they get that right? That's supposed to be what's on the lips of the world out there. <sighs> Too many times in the past, never again, in Jesus' name. I don't want to be a Christian. Look at all the problems they have and how they moan and groan to their God and how they have issues with one another and how they take offense and how this one cut their relationship with that one because this one did that one. Oh, that will go in Jesus' name. God's going to help us. We believe so. We believe so. Then, next one. What do you do with the kings in the cave? Ask your neighbor, what do you do with the kings in the cave? Now the five kings. That is uh, Joshua 10 verse 16. Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave. And then... Roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave. And then, but don't stop, pursue your enemies. But don't stop, pursue your enemies. Deal with the hidden strongholds, my brother, my sister. Deal with the hidden strongholds. They, there's no threat from them. You have a lot of victories, but those hidden strongholds, that represent, represented by the kings, principalities. Principalities, that when they come out there, they could have major authority still again in your life. No. No threat. Because they are behind all those stones in the cave. They are hiding in fear. But they're still alive. You better deal with that. You better deal. You better open up the cave. And deal with them. Expose them. Hang them on a pole like they did. But only for one day. Because tomorrow there must be a new testimony. Don't hang them until they fall off bit by bit. Rotten. <laughs> bone by bone. No. Take them off the evening. It was the testimony of yesterday. Remember the testimony. But move on. Don't stop attacking. Don't stop taking the initiative. Don't stop taking the initiative. When? When there's no threat, when there's no temptation, when there's no weakness, when there's no depression or discouragement or feeling bad, when everything is excellent. Deal with things. Ask Holy Spirit. What must I deal with? I feel excellent. So please show me, show me, please show me discouragements and fears in my life. No, come on. You at last, you are positive. Now you want to think about all the negative stuff. Now then when you are positive. Oh man, if you want to take the land, you better ask the Holy Spirit then because your emotion is not going to tell you because your emotion is going to tell you, I'm excited. 
But when you're excited, when you have strength, when you are strong in the Lord, say, God, just show me. I need to take the land. These, all the stuffies that can tomorrow attack me, show me how to attack them today when I'm strong. So that they cannot attack me tomorrow. Wise virgin, get the oil when it's not necessary. Amen. Just give your brother or sister just a, something there. Oh, <laughs> some guys with wisdom. Okay, okay, okay. All right. We have finished with that. Where are we going again? Okay. Number five. Attack your flesh. Fear, anxiety, discouragement. My brother, my sister. Everything that can hinder you to possess the land, the destiny, the dream God has for you. Don't wait for them to attack you. Don't wait for them to attack you. Are you with me? Ah, please, are you with me? Okay. Then the last part of this whole section of chapter 10. Let's go with the rest. They totally destroyed. They left no survivors. They subdued, subdued the whole region. They conquered because the Lord fought for Israel. Because the battle belongs to him. The battle belongs to him. But when you never go to the battleground, how must you see that God has given you the city? God has given you the land. How will you get into that place seeing God is fighting for you if you are just sitting back and follow no strategy? No Jericho will fall if you don't follow the strategy. But it was not you who brought the walls down. You followed the strategy, but then God will surprise you. You followed the strategy, God will surprise you. But you will not see the surprise. You will not see how God is fighting for you if you don't follow the strategy and do the all-night march to Ai. Do all around, the whole time around Jericho. Follow the strategy, my brother, my sister, sister and you will totally destroy it. No survivors, nothing of that city, nothing, there must be no life in that demonic stronghold. There must be no life in that temptation that's coming against you. Nothing must be still alive that some other time can crawl back to you and intimidate you or bring you down, bring you into discouragement. May God give you the wisdom, may God give me the wisdom that I understand the meaning of the miracle. The meaning of the miracle that you have breath today. The meaning of the miracle that you can sit here and you can hear the word freely. The meaning of the miracle that you can understand through the Holy Spirit. That's a gift by God. The meaning of the miracle that you are saved, that you're not going to burn in hell. But you're going to have eternity with Him. The meaning of all those miracles for why you are then here still on earth. Go and respect what he has done and find out so that you don't live for a miracle and think you have arrived when you received the miracle but that you understand it's the miracle is only a means for something it's there's a purpose for the miracle so that there can be an excellent life between you and your father your father desires an excellent life with you an excellent dream that he has planned for you. You can run into that dream when you understand the purpose of your miracles today. God, come and set us free from ourselves. But Lord, help us to see what you are saying. I pray that you will touch every heart, touch every eye in this place, Lord. To see what you are saying. I pray for a clarity so that hell will be confused how to attack the, these men and women. God, I pray that they will not stand in confusion so that hell have clarity of how to have strategy to destroy. No destruction for any man, every woman in this place, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Because God, I pray for them to have a desire, a desire to get into your word. When there's a time of excellence, when there's a time of peace, when there's a time of victory. God, that they will have the wisdom 
to have the time with you to understand how to attack. How to attack. How to initiate the attack. So that each one can reach. Reach the destiny, the dream that you have for them. God, I pray that we will believe what you believe and that there is an excellent future for us. God, help us to look at you. Then we are looking into our future. When we look at you, we can look into the future. When we look at you, we know there's love, there's hope, there's joy, there's strength, there's no discouragement, there's no fear about tomorrow. Because God, you're going to surprise us. Through your blood, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will touch every man and woman that will reach out to you, that will believe in your integrity, that will respect your integrity as the basis for their faith, Lord. I pray that in Jesus' name, in that name alone. And all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.